I am Dylan Jardin. I would say worse of the two creators, but still a creator. Dylan's also being humble. Like he is the kind of guy who will go and live under a rock and figure out the viral formula. And he is the reason our content popped off. Meet Dylan and Henry, two creators who went from sleeping on the floor of their apartment. We were trying to make a podcast. Nobody was listening to it to making viral shorts through the power of storytelling. My first short that was story driven did 30 million views. Their videos even got the attention of icons such as Will Smith and Tim Ferriss. Will Smith and his team, they had seen our Naval video and Naval had seen our Tim Ferriss video and Tim Ferriss had seen our My First Million podcast video. All thanks to their refreshing perspective on being a creator. We don't make movies to make money, we make money to make movies. And all of that led to? In the first year of making content, we went from zero subscribers to two million subscribers and one billion views. How did you do it? Dylan went monk mode and he was like, Henry, I'm just gonna go figure it out. And what he came back with four weeks later was, he's like, dude, like, I think if we're gonna crack something, we should A, take advantage of short form because that's where all the discoverability is. And then B, like, let's take a lesson from Mr. Beast, which is all about retention, retention, retention. And if we're gonna get really good at retention, like what's the best way I know to do that? Well, it's to tell stories. It's in your 60 second short, just tell a story. Before he came up with that insight, I was doing these like abstract, like YouTube shorts about book quotes, thinking people cared about me, they don't. Like the day Dylan had me switch over to these story driven shorts, immediately things took off. My first short that was story driven did 30 million views. So that was Dylan's big insight. It was literally like this short, had 3,000, and then the short after learning, hey, how about you just tell a story, 30 million. So it was like just night and day, the difference. I had a script, I was in Dylan's apartment, I was just cranking on a script. I was like, dude, you gotta read this thing. Like I'm stoked on it. It was my first clip about McDonald's. He comes over my shoulder, he takes a look and he's like, dude, what is this? This is garbage. Erase everything. Imagine we're sitting in a bar, we're drinking a beer and just explain the story to me. Like we're two friends. Tweaked the whole thing and it, it just went crazy. In addition to stories, your shorts have a very cool format. How did you find it? So how I had that original breakthrough, it wasn't anything novel that I came up with. I just, actually, I think Henry originally found this channel. He's like, dude, check out this thing on TikTok called Big Weird World. And it was like these one or two kids that were pretty much like our age. And all they did was just pull up a green screen behind them. And then they had animations, like kind of funny animations in the background telling history stories. I'm like, Dan, that's a really sick format. I don't see that on YouTube and we live on YouTube. So it's like, can we just take that same format and just absolutely blow this up? And the nice thing is it, it worked because it was already proven on TikTok. And how do you find viral worthy content? How do you know what to invest your time in in terms of scripting, shooting and editing? Similar to finding that format and remixing it for YouTube, we were like, let's just take already long form content, 10 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute videos that have millions of views. That's a blueprint for virality. They've already done it. So can we just tweak and remix and retell that story in 60 seconds? Don't reinvent the wheel. The other thing I think is like Dylan and I will just be scrolling through Twitter and you either see a blog post with a lot of likes or you see a little psychological hack or you see a little history story. And my thought is always, wow, if that hooked me, if I'm here like reading this longer thing now, well, there's gotta be like a thousand other people like me, 10,000 other people. That's kind of our general approach. But then it's like, figure out exactly what hooked you. Maybe it's a video of an armadillo just crossing the road. And it's like, wow, that video is really interesting. Cause like, I didn't expect the armadillo to like roll that way. Just figure out like what hooked you. And that's what you're going to use as your hook. So I would just take that now armadillo video and just like put that at the very start of your video and be like, look how crazy it is. This armadillo is rolling across the road. Do you have a system for finding a lot of good ideas? Yeah. So in terms of finding a lot of content ideas, I think it's just making that switch in your mind, which is like, I'm looking for ideas now. You don't just like sit on the couch and try and write down ideas. You just go about your day. And in conversation, someone says, well, why does this work the way it does? I don't know, let me Google it. Oh, okay, there's an idea. Or when you've got that switch turned, you start watching YouTube videos. It's like, what, what interests me? Did that thing go viral? Yes, it did. Okay, can I retell it? So I think you make the switch. You just say like, I'm going into idea mode, create a note in your phone, label it like my ideas, and then just go about your life. And as you see them pop up serendipitously out of life, write them down. It's near impossible to sit down and try and just come up with them. And then just refer back to your list and you've probably got a thousand things that would work. I don't know, our, our issue has never been searching for ideas day of. It's like filtering this list of 100 ideas. Which one do we want to shoot today? So how do you filter down the list? All right, with all these videos, we know they have viral potential. They already got our attention. So now it's just like, 
Okay, which one do I want to tell today? It's pretty easy. It's like, oh, today I want to talk about how sweet green makes money because I just ate a sweet green. As artists, you need deadlines. If you have that massive list, you need to say, hey, I got to get something out in 60 minutes because without even artificial deadlines, like you'll just be scrolling through the list forever. Make a deadline, write the thing, get it done. Where does niche fit into all of this? We never focus on a niche. Like we'd tell uh, a short about like the difference between zebras and horses. And then the next short would be like, how does Costco make money? Like very little overlap. There was just like enough traction. Like we didn't care if one was a million views and one was a hundred thousand. It's like roughly people are finding this interesting. And after that, I checked out of looking at stats altogether. Overall, once a month, maybe I'll check in and be like, okay, the views are at like 40 million this month or 20 million this month. I don't change really much beyond that. I just go whatever's interesting to me. I'm sure like Henry said, there are a thousand people that also find this interesting. We were trying to focus on the inputs as opposed to the outputs. It's like, let me just craft the best story I can. Let me just layer on the absolute best edit I can. And then I'm going to post the thing and ghost. That was what interested you at the time. So I think Dylan's really good at like just chasing like what feels like play as opposed to like grinding on what, what feels like work. And for us, that was just like not having a niche going, doing these broad appeal clips and, and just kind of chasing what we were interested in. We see a lot of creators make the mistake of focusing on the extrinsic stuff like views and subscribers. What else do you think trips up most new creators? The problem with content creation in general is everyone's trying to just be a better version of what they're already seeing. And that just never works because you're going to be like 10% better, but that's not enough to really crack through. You have to be 10 times better, not 10%. It's like, okay, how do you be 10 times better? Well, it's going to look like nothing you've seen before on YouTube. Particularly, we hadn't seen people spend three days to a week animating a short for 60 seconds and just telling it like Vox quality. So I think that's really like if we were to start over right now, it would be looking like, hey, what is that thing that no one's doing? I think that's hard. If you're just sitting on your butt and you don't know what to create, like I think that's hard. I think the straightforward way to become the best or be the only is to just take five different formats you like and five different topics you like and smash them together. For us, it was Big Weird World and Casey Neistat and Van Neistat and like Drunk History, Vox. And then when we smash the these six formats together, guess what? We're the only people doing Johnny Harris, Vox, Casey Neistat, Big Weird World, South Park, you know, like all in one. So I think finding formats that already work or even like old formats that worked in the past and then remixing them is, is a great place to start. Aside from a unique format, are there other ways new creators can stand out? What's nice about our style with the green screen pull up, it's like we almost have that now patented on YouTube. Like it's just like our thing. And the nice thing is it is in the first three seconds. We're going to have something recognizable where you see this green screen and us on screen pulling it up it's like okay that's a good video i've seen a million videos like this before they clearly work so that's where i'd really invest my innovation energy it's like okay how do i like figure out how to really stand out at the start there's some way where you can just get people to stop the scroll in the first three seconds and make that just your trademark style do you think beginner creators should start with shorts instead of long form i love shorts compared to long form because shorts is like you just make a video like long form you got to figure out like is the title good is the thumbnail good oh i just spent two weeks on this and it's got to work versus a short is like, hey, I'm going to put out a short today and then a short in two days. And it's like, I'm just pumping out content. So like, if this doesn't work, that's totally fine. I'm just going to keep doing what I like. So there's just a lot less pressure, especially when you're starting out. And these short form platforms are like the ultimate rewarder of just good video or good story. Thumbnail doesn't matter. Hashtags don't matter. Titles doesn't matter. Description doesn't matter. None of that matters. It's just like, may the best story, may the best retention video win. What would you say to creators who think shorts and YouTube YouTube in general are super competitive. So everything, yes, it's super competitive because everyone's just copying each other. But if you decide just not to copy other people, it's just pure blue ocean. Finding the blue ocean, that's a term we hear a lot these days. How did you learn not to copy and make quality content? We have a couple of philosophies, but one of them is perfection through iteration, not revision. So we're trying, especially with short form, it's just like, hey, awesome. I think we could tweak this going forward, but let's just publish this because we, we get really excited about hitting publish. And now the next version, we're going to apply this new concept that maybe we, we missed on the last one. We're okay publishing content that's good enough, it's still very high quality, but it's good enough just to like keep that inspiration, the, the passion moving forward. And Henry and I, we look back at our videos from a year ago and like we can't physically watch them. Like we're, we're squirming in our seats. At the time we thought it was awesome. And it's like, if we just accept, hey, as long as this video is just a little bit better than the last one, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're moving in the right direction. Now, when you look back a year later, it's like, this looks like Pixar. How the hell did we get there? Oh, well, it's through perfection, through iteration. What would you say to creators 
those who are perfectionists. He we came across this video and, and quote from Jack Conti, the founder of Patreon, where he said, take things to and publish them at 80% because going from 80% to 100 scrubs all the fun out of the process. And we saw that he published that video like right when we were getting our start. We release things at 80% because nothing fun happens at 80 to 100%. You mentioned you had a couple of philosophies. What's the other one? This was another framework we were lucky enough to find at the time. I forget who it came from, but it was just relish in the obscurity. Nobody cares about you right now. Nobody's watching your stuff, which is beautiful because you can just create and create and create and learn and tinker and tweak things and get 1% better each time while nobody's watching. Relish in that obscurity. Do you have an example of where you tried to get 1% better each time, but still didn't get views? I shot like 200 daily vlogs and nobody was watching them. But what I realized is if you just do that, if you go through the motions, like day one short is going to be very different from day 200. If you're just like, can I make this 0.5%? 1% better with each iteration, even if nobody's watching it, then you're going to be a lot better off uh, 200 days down the line. Making 200 daily blogs could have easily led to burnout. What's your take on that? I think it's easy to, to burn out on content, especially content you just don't love doing. We've always tried to avoid this pigeonhole of like, you find one video that works and then you're just like, I'm gonna keep doing that thing. And you find yourself like in a couple months doing a video and I know a ton of creators like this, videos that you don't actually care about. You just did it because the algorithm rewarded that. We've always tried to only teach things and tell stories that we, we really like so that we could do it for a long time. When the thing you're exploring, the topic you're exploring, the idea you're exploring, when it just feels like play, when it feels like like it's that thing that you could do for 18 hours a day and like you don't stop to look at your clock once then like burnout's never even a question that's a really healthy way of looking at things any final words i just think like there are two big concepts with how we create create for yourself and then be the best at that so basically be your own favorite creator i think that's just what we've done it just makes the creation process so much more fun when you're creating for yourself versus like chasing some algorithm or getting locked into some niche because somebody told you to now just create videos you want to make and see in the world and you'll be your number one fan. Dylan and Henry aren't the only ones crushing with shorts. Here's a creator who's averaging 10 million views per short, and she told us all of her secrets. 